Welcome back to Giant Monster Games. I'm Adrian, and my MTGO has been having a ton of problems. Uh, I would like to keep this opening hand, but I have a hunch it's not going to let me. Can we talk to our opponent? Let's find out. Uh, MTGO is crashing. <laughs> Let's see if they actually get that. Uh, looks like they did. And looks like we're playing. Looks like things might be working. Sweet. Looks like it's working. Working. Alright. Okay. <laughs> we can actually keep going with this game now. Excellent. Sweet. Okay. Well, I mean, I just tried recording four matches, all of which crashed within the first round. So, this is interesting. I'm glad that it's working. I'm Adrian, by the way. This is Giant Monster Games, and we are playing some more negative counters, if you didn't actually get that from what I just said. Um, what do we think of this opening hand, by the way? I, did, I totally didn't have the ability to uh, um, actually choose my opening hand. Actually, it's not a terrible opening hand, so I think we're actually going to keep it. It looks like we were playing against goblins, though, so that is potentially problematic. Potentially not. It's kind of like 50-50, really. Uh, let's throw down the Fume Spitter, because that's really our only option, and then ship it to our opponent's turn to see what they think of Fume Spitter and awesome minus one, minus one counter deck. I think this is the plan. And yeah, ship it through. Nothing else we're doing on this turn. I think Incremental, bro incre incremental Blight is actually going to be quite good uh, if we manage to get to turn 5. And we get enough mana to cast it on turn 5. It's going to be really good. Um, Fume Spitter is going to be okay. Uh, we can use it to kill off whatever he plays. Um, specifically, Foundry Denison is actually going to be really big, really problematic because if he plays anything like Dragon Fodder or whatever, this he's going to get really, really big. Because if you guys don't know, if you haven't seen the Goblins deck I did, um, Foundry, Denis Foundry Street Denison gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn for each creature, red creature that enters the battlefield this turn. So when he plays stuff like a whole bunch of Goblins on one turn, it gets really big. Legion Loyalist. That's also going to need to get destroyed relatively quickly. Um, I'm going to always yield to this because I'm not going to be stopping it. I should actually move that so it's up over here so it's not blocking like the middle of the screen for you guys. So, yeah. Um, I'm assuming our opponent's going to uh, swing in. Uh, what we will likely do is block the Foundry Street Denison and then sack it to destroy the Legion Loyalist. Might as well not take 3 damage because it is an aggro deck and I'd rather not have to deal with a whole bunch of aggro -y stuff in an aggro deck. Because that just doesn't seem like fun to me. <laughs> Never ever seems like fun to me. So we block here. Let's see if our opponent has any responses. We then sacrifice destroying Legion Loyalist. Because Legion Loyalist will actually be the problematic one for us if we don't deal with it quick. Uh, Legion Loyalist, for those that don't know, is it has haste, which is cool. It's 1-1 one, one for haste, with haste, which is whatever. But whenever uh, him and at least two other creatures attack, they get first strike and trample. So basically it creates all of his creatures. Uh, makes it so his creatures become like kind of hard to deal with, like, really big, especially once he has a bunch of creatures swinging in. So we took no damage, which is awesome for us, and yeah, we get to go to our turn, and I think this sounds rad. Um, we don't have a turn two play, which is unfortunate. Um, so we might as well play the Swamp, let our opponent not know that we're playing um, anything special. He, I mean, Fume Spitter seem, probably seems pretty strange as well, but he probably doesn't know we're playing green as well. So, and then we'll ship it to our opponent's turn. Um, he didn't play a land last turn. Our opponent was on, we were on the draw, so our opponent only had a single land hand, which is actually really good for us. It means that we probably have a better bet of actually surviving this game, um, because really fast aggro decks tend to give us a little bit of problem because we are really a mid-range deck. Like, we rely on getting into the mid-game to really um, actually survive. <laughs> so we kind of are waiting to get there. Um, Mog Fanatic. Uh, it's not actually that bad for us. Uh, we're probably just going to take two damage here, and then next turn we're probably going to just throw down the Necro Skitter, which will be fantastic, <laughs> because he can't just swing in with stuff like Foundry's Genesis without giving it like First Strike or something else like this. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be rad for us. And our opponent did not play another land, it looks like. Let's see. If our opponent plays a land, yeah, we have nothing, no responses. Does our opponent play another land on their second main phase? They don't. Our opponent is on a one land hand. So now I think we literally just throw down a Swamp and then a Necroskitter and then ship it to our opponent's turn. Um, bolt doesn't stomp Necroskitter, which is really good. Mind you, he can always Bolt and sack Mog Fanatic to kill it, so that is also something that could happen. Um, I was thinking of putting down potentially Nest of Scarabs first, uh, because Nest of Scarabs, in theory, whenever Necroskitter is putting stuff down or putting counters on creatures, 
Uh, we'll get tokens. The thing I'm concerned about is I don't want to be playing Nest of Scarabs now, and then our opponent potentially swinging in for a whole bunch of damage. So, which is the which is the real threat here, uh, because if he does play you know, second land, if he plays um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, well, there's a lot of things he can play right now that will just make Foundation's Innocent like really big. So I don't want to kind of like run the risk of taking a whole bunch of damage because I decided I wanted to try and get a little bit extra value from Nest of Scarabs. So our opponent needs to play. Uh, three creatures, I think, to get value enough to make Foundry, Foundry Street Denison actually worth swinging in with. And he swings in with both. Does he have instant speed, anything that would matter? That's what I want to know. He could have a bolt, which means Necro Skitter isn't very good for us. Um, the thing is, even if we kill the Foundry Street Denison, we're only getting a 1-1 one, one that we're never ever going to make it bigger. Um, but it would prevent him from potentially swinging in with other bigger stuff. So, what do I think? I think we literally just hang out. We'll take the two damage. We're not going to block. Because we do have incremental blight, so if we can make it another two turns, which we should. I mean, our opponent should basically have us dead by now if they were playing on the aggro. If they were really had the aggro, you know, cards in hand. Um, they're not. So we can probably make it through and we can actually get incremental blight. Um, I don't see how that helps him at all. Oh, he's probably going to bolt anyways. And bolt. I'm guessing he's going to bolt as well. Um, yeah. So I probably should have just blocked one of these guys anyways. Um, I always thought he was kind of like faking up a bolt, but apparently not. So I should have blocked. Didn't. Not the end of the world. Uh, and now we... What do we do? Might as well just throw it in the forest. Throw it a nest of scarabs. And we'll leave up the swamp so our opponent thinks that we may have a fatal push in hand. Just in case things get hairy. Uh, obviously we don't, we don't have Fatal Push in the deck, but our opponent doesn't know this. So we're going to play it down and we're going to ship it to our opponent's turn. We're probably going to take a little bit of damage this turn. Not a ton of damage, just a little bit. And then hopefully he'll actually play it on a bunch of stuff and then we're going to throw Incremental Blight down. Because Incremental Blight is absolutely fantastic. He needs to get three creatures though. He needs to play, or at least two more creatures. If he gets two more creatures down, then we're going to get the full value off of Incremental Blight. If he doesn't, if he only throws out one creature, we may actually throw down another Nest of Scarabs and then something else because then we'll uh, get a whole bunch more. <laughs> so we need, we basically need him to have two creatures, is what, what needs to happen. Uh, protection from blue, okay, that's fine. He's going to make his Foundation of Genesis in a little bit bigger. Not a ton bigger, but a little bit bigger. Um, what else does this guy do here? So he has protection from blue, sure. And whenever, oh, this is Goblin Pile Driver. <laughs> this is the old art for Goblin Pile Driver. I'm so used to the new art, because that's the one I own, um, like in paper and in the like Goblin deck that we played. Um, but the new one, or the old art, looks like this. So whenever a goblin comes into play, or whenever a goblin pile driver attacks, it gets plus two, plus oh, until in turn for each other attacking goblin. So that is potentially problematic for us. If, well, I mean, he doesn't have a bunch more goblins. He doesn't have a whole bunch of other goblins, so it's not actually that that big a deal right now. Um, it could become a very big deal very quickly, though. Oh, Doomblade. Doomblade is also really good. Um, so our options are... Can we actually even play... Incremental Blight? I don't think we can. I think we literally just play another Nest of Scarabs. We'll take a little bit of damage from these guys swinging in. And then we're going to Incremental Blight next turn to get a ton of Scarabs. And that's what's going to be our like our go-wide strategy. I think that's how we're going to end up winning on this one. Is go-wide with Scarabs. Okay, our opponent's turn. Um, they have four cards in hand, so they still could have some action. Um, they didn't. They they had a really slow start because they had one land for the first like three turns, I think it was. So our opponent at this point could be gearing up. So our opponent's gonna play another Foundry Denison, which is fine for us. This is fine for us. We'll take the damage because we're gonna be able to incremental blight and this will wipe their board, which is gonna be good because then we'll actually get a ton of scarabs, like a lot of scarabs. I mean, well, we're gonna get three, four, five, six. We're gonna get twelve scarabs. Twelve <laughs> scarabs. <laughs> so many. It's gonna be awesome. Um, because he, even with his craziness, oh, and Bushwhacker, oh, does that get us? Um, about to find out. Uh, so this is going to be, what, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We're going to have to Doomblade, probably the pile driver, <laughs> in order not to die. I think that's what's going to have to happen. Doomblading the pile driver because our opponent is swinging in for lethal right now. He's swinging in for 16 damage, which we can deal with. I mean, this is not the end of the world for us. I mean, we have we have an out, and its name is Doomblade. Thankfully, we have it in play. 
Uh, obviously, we were kind of holding up for incremental blight. Uh, we kind of had a slow opening hand. We didn't have any real action. We had like we had the token generating stuff, but not a lot of the like putting minus one counters stuff. Uh, yeah, so. You know, we didn't quite have all of the pieces to make the synergy of the negative counters deck work as well as it probably could. Doesn't mean we're out of this game, though. Does not mean we're out of the game. Especially because next turn we're going to Incremental Blight and wipe our opponent's board. So, assuming our opponent actually decides what they're doing here. Um, we're waiting on our opponent at this point. I wonder if their MTGO is now crashing. I hope not. I mean, that's the worst thing ever when you're like, I just want to hang out and play a bunch of games. I don't want to like, worry about all this stuff. I just want to play. Playing would be cool. So, let's find out. Uh, so, Foundry Denison. Um, yeah. Craziness. Craziness indeed. This is what Goblins decks do, right? It's like, all Goblins under the table, swing for faces, all destroy everything. <laughs> it's pretty It's pretty awesome. I love playing Goblins. Goblins is like one of my favorite decks to play. Just because I'm, I'm a really like, aggro-y player. I really just want to like, Swing for faces. Like, play stuff and rush. Play stuff, rush. Because um, I'm not very good at. Uh... Oh, oh yeah, opponent is having leg problems. I was having that problem later. That problem before. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm. I get very impatient, and I'm like, oh, I just want to. I just want to attack. Can I attack? Um, so I'm like, that's why my like control plan or my control play is like pretty weak. I'm like not the best control player um, because again I just, I don't want to like hold up mana I mean I should hold up mana for the counter spell but I kind of want to play this because it allowed me to win um, is kind of been, tends to be my mentality uh, when I'm playing combo though I tend to be not as bad because combo tends to be like also racing you're like gotta get there fast gotta get there fast I mean I gotta get everything going um, so <laughs> but definitely not so good on my uh, my control plan. Mind you, this isn't really that much of a control deck. It does have some control elements to it. It kind of plays like a control deck, and we'll actually probably have to put in some control stuff uh, to deal with this, um, because we can't reliably uh, kind of have a slower deck. We're going to have to put stuff in a little bit faster. So that is going to be the plan. Um, our opponent is having some leg problems, he was saying, so uh, we are going to just hold up for him, because we were having leg problems earlier. I should I say we. I was having some major leg problems before I actually started this game. Um, as I said before, I restarted, I think I had four games before I actually got this one working. So, Which is why the beginning of this video was like, let's see if this is actually working. I don't know if it's working, maybe it's working, so uh, yeah. Uh, morning, morning, morning. That's what time of day it is. So we are just going to wait up for our opponent. To see if they manage to click all their cards. I guess they're, they're having leg problems. MTGO is really slow right now. I'm not sure why. They might have done an update last night. Um, or a lot of the last couple nights. And it's just kind of... Maybe... I mean, there's a bunch of things that could be. Um, I could just spout out random words if you guys feel like I should do that. Like stuff like memory leak. Which is not a magic card. But it's something that happens when a game has a constant loop. Where it needs to be doing something. Um, it's a memory leak. Um... It may or may not be this, <laughs> for the record, I don't know. Okay, so Goblin Pile Driver is going to get real big. Uh, what have we got? What? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So before Goblin Pile Driver even does its thing, we are just going to do Blade it to get rid of it. Yep. Oh, I should let our opponent know. No problem, dude. Uh, opponent is like, ah, sorry, dude, uh, for making you wait. Um, I understand when the lag is real, and it is the only thing that you can currently exist within. Okay, so, um, I think what we do is skin incremental blight. Two screechers put a minus one counter on. Uh, you. Two screechers put my two minus counters. You. And then you. Uh, I guess we pay everything. <laughs> we, we tap ourselves out. And then we play incremental blight, and we get 12... Count them. 12 Scarabs. So I'm not sure how our opponent plays through this. We are not at we're not at lightning bolt range. And our opponent is tapped out so he can't goblin grenade us. But in theory, if he has the mana, he could play a one-drop goblin and then goblin grenade our face. So this is definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, so, But if we go to our turn next turn, do we win if we play next turn? No, we need two turns. So we are playing this close to the chest. Like, almost as close as we possibly can. Uh, we need our opponent not to have Goblin Grenade and a one-drop Goblin. Um, or we need our opponent to s to let us play for two more turns. So if our, our, if our opponent does play a two-drop Goblin, 
Um, we can always skin render it next turn, which should be fine. Um, or a three drop goblin. Technically, he shouldn't have. He may have a couple three drop goblins, like a uh, goblin rabble master. Maybe. Um, you don't really see Goblin Rabble Master too much in uh, actual like modern Goblin decks that are playing competitively, like that are playing like the um, eight whack deck, um, largely because they're just a little bit too slow. I mean, sure you're getting goblins every single turn, but they're technically too slow. You kind of need to get your like all your one drops and then your couple two drops, specifically stuff like Goblin Pile Driver, just to like force things through. So, um, and our opponent probably is still dealing with the leg, the real real leg. So. Um, yeah, I feel like I, I could play the Goblin stack right now better than I could play this, like, minus one counter stack we're playing right now. <laughs> so, that negative counter deck. It's super fun, though. Um, I'm going to go always yield because we know, we know we're getting scarabs. We don't need to react to us getting scarabs. <laughs> we're okay with this. So, this is going to create a ton. So, the thing that makes Nest of Scarabs, I should, I should point this out. I pointed it out in the deck tech video, I'm going to point it out again. The thing that makes that Nest of Scarabs so amazing is it's whenever we put one or more one, minus one, minus one counter on a creature, we create that many 1-1 one, one black instant Scarab creature tokens. So, in theory, uh, when we put three minus one, minus one counters on a creature, we get three Scarabs from it. Not just like Hapartra, just for the record, Hapartra, we don't uh, get... Um, is it Hapart uh, maybe it's Hapartra. Hapatra? Maybe it's Hapatra. It's not... I've been calling her Haparta, which is totally wrong, for the record. Anyways, um, unlike her where we only get a single one, we get a ton from this. So let's ship it to our opponent's turn, because we don't have anything else we... Oh, theoretically, we could have played our land. Theoretically. I would rather leave it up and let our opponent guess what we may have, um, because we don't really need more land. Like, there's nothing really that we would need uh, an additional land past the one we have in our hand uh, to play. And what is our opponent doing? Does our opponent scoop is the next question. Um, does our opponent think they can come back from this? Again, they could just literally play any goblin and a goblin grenade and win. But that uh, is a... I mean, that's two cards he needs to play, and goblin grenade is a two drop. Oh. Ooh. That's, uh, that's scary for us. So he can play a one or two drop goblin and a goblin grenade. Assuming he has it, I mean, if you're playing a goblin deck, you generally have goblin grenade. So goblin bushwhacker for one. And does he have goblin grenade is the next question. Goblin grenade? Goblin grenade? Do you have a goblin grenade? We're about to find out. He's paying costs. Either that or maybe another goblin. And one mountain. Tapped one mountain. Did he tap the second one? If he taps the second one, we're dead. Even lightning bolt, we're fine with. And it is a goblin grenade. Darn! Okay, well, we're going to go to the sideboard. And that is a uh, game for our opponent. We go to sideboard, and we need to figure out how do we beat goblins. Because goblins is definitely way faster than us. So we need to be able to, like, what do we need to make so we can be faster than them? Um... All damage is dealt to the head with her. I think... I kind of want to throw in duresses. To be quite honest. Because we can grab bolts and... I um, mean, obviously we can't grab creatures. Like, I would love to be playing, um, like, Thought Seize or Inquisition over duress in this deck. Because this is the one one big thing we have, is we'd have a problem with, like, fast target decks like this. Uh, we also have a deck... Uh, we have a really hard time against stuff like Ad Nauseam, uh, Storm, a bunch of others. a bunch of decks out there that just, like, are really, really hard for this specific deck to deal with. And a lot of those problems tend to kind of go away if we can put Hand Disruption in the main deck... Or in the deck. And in this case, we're running Duress because it's a budget option. Um, because the other cards are, like, $5 each, if not more. Some of them are way more than $5 each, like $10 each. Uh, the other option we could do is also throwing down Evil Presence and just trying to, like, get rid of all those mountains, because he tends to play quite light on the mountains. So making it so he can't play stuff could be problematic. I think that's actually the kind of wrong way to look at this, to be quite honest. Um, and I think taking out Incremental Blight is probably going to be a, a good... Actually, no, Incremental Blight can stay. I think Skin Render comes out, though. Um, I think all three of them come out. Uh, just because they're slow. They're just way too slow, and they get rid of one creature. If we were playing against, like, um, like a green deck of some sort that's playing stompy creatures, then sure, Skinmender is good, but playing against Goblin deck where almost everything is 1-1s, one just not really worth it for us. And I think actually taking out... Actually, no, we're going to leave in the Incremental Blight, because we, if we get to turn 5, we can usually wipe his board quite a bit. 
Uh, same with Midnight Banshee. Uh, we're going to go down one Midnight Banshee. Uh, but if we do get it out, it's generally pretty good for us. And I'm kind of hemming and hawing on Beast Within. But I think it's actually... I think we have another enough other stuff that we can actually use to like wipe his board. So let's see if we are fast enough to deal with our opponent. And we are going to play first, 100%. Uh, this is not... Oh, no, it's okay. Um, is it... Actually, this is not a bad opening hand. Um, it, it has a lot of action to slow down his, his early game, which is actually what we need. It doesn't have a lot of, like, late... Like, we don't have any real plan for once we get into, like, the mid to late game. But it does have a lot of, as I said, early game stuff where he's going to play something and we're just going to scar and kill it right away. It's kind of the plan. Uh, hopefully we can grab, like, a Goblin Pile Driver um, or his... I forget the name of it, the one that gives all of his stuff first strength, uh, first strike and uh, trample. Um, these are the kind of things we just want to get rid of. Foundation Denison, you are fine. I don't need to worry about you too much. I'm not too worried about you right now. Um, but I will still scar you and get rid of you. Um, largely because we're going to play Channel or Initiate next turn. Uh, which is going to get us more mana, which will hopefully allow us to get you know farther faster, um, which means we're not going to have mana up for another Scar. So getting rid of one of his, like, another Channel Initiate, neat. Um, so yeah. So yeah. But basically what we're doing is we're playing Scar on his turn because we're playing all of our mana this turn um, when we're not leaving up, and we'll actually potentially save ourselves, realistically, we'll probably save ourselves, like, two damage, which is, is better. We'll pay, pay one life to prevent one life. So it's a you know, positive one, theoretically. Um, but he also, if he has another mountain, if he has something like uh, Dragon Fodder, he, we could be potentially saving, like, you know, three life. <laughs> or two life. Um, so, yeah. It's all about the small math when it comes to, to aggro. Like, how, how do we get to the late game? Also, we're going to have to be, with the Channeler Initiate, we're going to have to start tapping it down um, on our opponent's turn if we don't use the mana, because we definitely need um, this thing to get bigger quick. We want it to be a 3-4 as fast as possible. Um, so I would not be surprised if he sacks it to destroy the Channeler Initiate right away. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, just because I mean he knows it's going to get big. He knows what's going to happen with it. So dealing with it quick is probably good. Which actually gives us an entire another turn. So it basically just for, it slows us down. We have another Channeler Initiate, but it also slows him down. And we that's what we need to do. We need to just get to the mid to late game um, in order for us to really start taking off. Uh, so let's leave up the Lenoir Waste so we can scar something if we need to. Uh, and obviously we're putting the counters on Chandler Initiate herself. And then shipping it to our opponent's turn. We need another Swamp. Um, either need another Swamp or we need to get to another turn where we can use Chandler Initiate to create black mana for us. And then we're going to play the Necro Skitter, which is actually going to be really good because it may allow us... Fury's going to light and bolt it. That too. That also works. For our opponent, that is. Um, so we need to find a way of getting a Necro Skitter into play because it's going to allow us to start stealing our opponent's stuff, which is really what we want to be doing. Uh, and I'm okay with him burning away lightning bolts to deal with stuff like Chandler Initiate, because we do have stuff that's a little bit more important for us to be playing, which is fine for me. And what does our opponent do? Our opponent has five cards in hand, so our opponent still has plenty of action, um, especially if we have no board state. Um, he has lots of action he could potentially be doing. So, as I was saying before, I mean, just kind of reiterating my point, uh, this deck... Um, the negative counters deck against really fast aggro decks, specifically goblins or red deck wins, uh, tends to like burn kind of decks. <laughs> um, tends to be a little bit too slow. We are a little bit too slow. We can win, um, but our win rate is pretty low compared to you know a lot of other decks we play against. So yeah, I mean, and again, something else to keep in mind is like the goblins deck is realistically actually a pretty high end deck uh, in the grand scheme of all of the stuff. I mean, it is played relatively competitively. It's probably like a tier two deck. Um, in some metas right now, the meta is kind of 50-50 on it, but in some metas, it is um, really, really powerful. Okay, well, Necro Skitter it is. Paying a life, unfortunately, for it. Uh, we could have... Uh, no, as I say, we could have scarred the Goblin Pile Driver, but we could not have done that, so... And then we'll ship it to our opponent's turn, and if he swings in, we're going to block, put a minus one counter on it, and then we'll probably just scar it next turn to kill the Goblin Pile Driver. Um, just so we also, and then we'd also steal it, which is a nice thing. Depending also what he plays, if he plays something else, like, um, uh, I'm trying to think of what else he might play, uh, we may just scar that as well, uh, just to steal it. So that's one thing, is we can probably, 
Hmm. What does the echo actually do on this thing? Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you if there uh, this came into play under your control since the beginning of your last upkeep, sacrifice unless you pay its cost. Huh. That's not gonna help us at all. Um, so I can't. <laughs> I'm not gonna steal Mog War Marshal. Uh, that doesn't really help us out at all. Because then we have to sacrifice it when it echoes. But he may. It doesn't have. It doesn't have haste. Um, but he may have something to give it haste. So that's a thing as well. My mouse is acting all strange on me. Bushwhacker. Okay, we're getting into danger territory here, guys. Super danger territory. So, Bushwhacker and uh, gives everything haste. So it's going to be what? Uh, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 damage. And we are going to block something. I think we will probably block the Bushwhacker. I think... Is that the right way to go? Uh, then we would steal the Bushwhacker. This guy goes away. Actually, so Goblin Pile Driver is going to get nice and big, which is fine. Um, the thing is, we could always block. We have a couple options. Okay, so we are have, what, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We have 14 on board, uh, which puts us at 4, which means we are definitely in Goblin Pile Driver, or in uh, Goblin Grenade range. Uh, if we block anything, uh, we'll be at at least six, which means we still could technically survive a Goblin Grenade. Um, what we could do is block the Goblin Pile Driver and just take six damage, and Goblin Pile Driver goes down to a zero one. We don't get it. Um, but if we block, say, like the Mog War Marshal, it's going to die, come back into play. We're going to get two two tokens off of it, in theory. Um, or we can, yeah. So I think that's the way we're going to go. So I think we're actually going to block the Mog War Marshal. It gets a minus one counter on it, which means it dies. Our opponent gets a token, sure. Uh, we take a bunch of damage, but we're also going to get the Mog War Marshal, and so we'll actually get two Goblin Tokens off of it as well, in theory. And we also get to keep our Necro Skitter, which means we can scar probably his Rakdos, uh, his um, Reckless Bushwhacker. Uh, yeah. So we'll actually be able to get a little bit of a board state which is good for us um, because we need to be able to start chump blocking stuff because Goblin Pile Driver is going to kill us really quick. Um, especially because we're at 6 and we really need to be swinging in and getting some damage in. Um, otherwise, we're not going to develop our board state in the way that we need to. Okay. And then if we go to our turn, we should lose the Mog War Marshal. Yes, I can't pay his echo cost. So he goes away. We're not paying it. But we do get a token from it, which is good. So we have another goblin token. And what do we draw? <laughs> we draw a Chandler Initiate. That's not what we need. That's really not what we need. Um, so we could... What? Um, I kind of want to scar on our turn, because if he does have a goblin grenade, he'll just, um, he'll just play it in response to whatever we de decide to target. Uh, what we really could use is a way of destroying bush or destroying um, pile driver, but we don't. So let's scar his bushwhacker, which means we steal it, which is good. Yes, we are going to steal his bushwhacker, and then we'll play our channeler initiate, which, if anything else, could just be a blocker, which is fine, and. Yeah, you targeting Chatler initiate. Um, we realized actually. Oh, uh, uh, no, that's fine. I was actually gonna say we probably could have put those counters on one of these guys, but I think actually having the extra bodies is actually not a bad idea. Okay, uh, now I think we are going to just. S do we swing in or do we sit? Do we swing in or do we sit? I think we swing in with. I don't need that stop. I think we swing in with one goblin in hopes that we'll just get the one damage in, because we have enough chump blockers to deal with all of his other stuff. Um, yeah, I think that's the way it's going to be. Okay. We are slowly turning the tides. The thing is, we are a goblin grenade and lightning bolt away from dead, so what we do need is a obelisk spider to start gaining some life, 
which would help us out. That would be the big one, I think. I think, I think. And what does our opponent have? So, balls in our opponent's court. In theory, our opponent could win it, depending on what he has in hand. Um, because Goblin Grenade does 5 damage, which doesn't kill us. Uh, we have enough blockers to deal with whatever he decides to come in with. Mog War Marshal is a thing. And if he has another Bushwhacker, we may be out of the game. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Uh, Frenzy Goblin. Uh, what is Frenzy Goblin when it comes into play? What is it? Uh, when Frenzy Goblin attacks, you may pay red if you do. Target creature can't block this turn. Okay, does our opponent attack in? I don't think he does. Doesn't make sense for him to attack in because we'll just kill stuff. So, there's a lot of things we can draw right now that would help. Swamp not being one of them. Uh, huh. Well, that's a thing. Yeah, I think we just, uh, I think we just go to our opponent's turn. We sit. We don't play the Swamp. We let him think that we have removal in hand, so he has to play around potential removal. And we just go for it. We're just going to go for it. So we kind of were like we're waiting to get like at least one other piece to our puzzle to start actually like getting rid of the stuff on his side, and then we can actually start moving forward on our, our kill plan, which is uh it's a it's a dangerous dance. It's a <laughs> dangerous dance indeed. Um, Necroskitter becomes really handy, like even more handy against things like um, like bigger creatures where we're stealing bigger stuff. But I mean, stealing like a two one is like sure I guess it's fine, but it's not amazing. So. Um, I would I would not be surprised if he swings in with everything because then we have to deal with Goblin Pile Driver. Uh, the thing is, if we do, if he does swing with Goblin Pile Driver, we'll probably just block with Reckless Bushwhacker because Goblin Pile Driver doesn't have Trample. He just gets uh, really big. And other Goblin creatures get plus one, plus one, and have haste. Is that enough to kill me? I don't think it is, but he may he may swing in to grind down almost everything that I have. That becomes really, really painful. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, okay, we'll see what happens here. Um, because, what is it? One, two, three, four, five. So at least the minimum we're taking is four damage. So we're going to be at two, at the very minimum. Um, and we don't kill one much of his stuff. So him just swinging in two turns in a row is probably best bet. Again, as I was saying before, I mean, we can win against hasty um, haste decks, like, not haste decks, fast aggro decks, uh, but it sometimes it is not very, not very easy. And right now, it is not very easy. So, going to combat, does our opponent decide he's going to swing with everything? That is probably his best bet. This, realistically, that's what he should do. Swing with everything. Okay. He is swinging with everything. Oh, he's no, he's holding back his goblin chieftain. Okay. So, these guys are going to trigger... Get some Goblin Pile Driver getting really, really big, which means we're going to have to block it. Um, and it looks like we're actually not going to go down to two. We're going to go down to four, which surprises me. And, oh, he's going to make it so our Necroskitter can't block. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah. So that means we still go down to two. Oh, boy. So we need to block... Someone needs to block the um, Pile Driver. Someone has to block the pile driver because it's going to be huge, like a 10, 10 something or other. Probably 10 3, I think. Mm, 12 3. <laughs> Even bigger. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's go to blocks. Um, May as well. Actually, no. You don't go there. Uh, you can take this guy out. Um, you guy may as well take that guy. And we may as well go here. And no point in tapping her down. So we take two from the goblins. He loses his frenzied goblin, at least. Um, yeah, I think that's the way she goes. No other real plan. I wish this was a removal spell. Um, the one thing we could draw right now is Incremental Blight. That would help us out. Ooh, Incremental Blight it is. And Incremental Blight, thank you very much. 
Okay, so put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. Uh, sure, this guy. Put 2 on this guy. Put 3 on this guy. And killing off a bunch of his stuff, stealing it all, which is fantastic. This makes me feel real good. Always yes. <laughs> Always yield. <laughs> okay, we may have turned the tides of battle. I mean, again, he's... Goblin Grenade or Lightning Bolt away from killing us, which uh, is very dangerous and very scary. Uh, we can't swing in, because literally anything that he swings in with, uh, we die. Um, oh no, technically two, any two things. Um, yeah, let's sit. Let's sit, let's sit, let's sit. Because um, we don't have any other action. If we swing with one thing, we'll get two damage, which would be fine. But realistically, we need to do more than two damage. Realistically. Oh, and our opponent's down to four minutes on the clock, or five minutes on the clock. Um, and I'm I'm doing okay. Twelve minutes on the clock, or thirteen minutes on the clock, really. It's twelve minutes and fifty-three seconds. Doing okay. We, our opponent, it looks like our opponent's just shipping it through to us. He's not going to swing in. Doesn't make any sense for him to swing in. Um, and what do we draw? We draw a Doomblade, which is pretty rad. I think what we do is we are going to swing in. Do we swing in with everything? I don't think we can swing in with everything. Um, but we can definitely swing in with these two guys. Oh, no, the big problem is, here's the big trick, here's the big scary, is if we swing in with everything, if we swing with everything, he could Goblin Bushwhacker, which makes stuff bigger, which means we die. Um, dang. Dang, 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 dang. Yeah. If I swing in with Goblin Pile Driver, he literally just blocks with everything. Um, swing a Necro Skitter doesn't really win us much, other than one damage. So I think we are forced to sit on our hands one more time. One more time of sitting on our hands. We need to draw more action. Like, there's tons of things we can be drawing, we just need to draw into them. Um, the Withering... what is it? The Witch would be really good. Uh, Midnight Banshee, specifically, would be really good for us. Our opponent's sitting on two cards now. <laughs> Our opponent's literally just trying to draw into, like, a Lightning Bolt. Okay. Hapatra. <laughs> We're gonna play her right now. Because she's actually gonna be quite good. And because of us playing her, we can actually swing in with some stuff. I think specifically we're going to swing in with Necro Skitter. I think it's going to be the plan. It's going to be the plan. And Hapatra, yes, yeah, because he can't... If he blocks, we get Snake Tokens, which is going to be good for us. Um, we are... Do we have enough mana up for Doomblade? So we can always Doomblade if we need to. And we do have, theoretically, blockers. Because we're at 2 life, it's super duper risky. Um, mind you, I'm kind of wondering at this point if we should just swing in with all three of these guys, hold up Doomblade, and then if he does... Oh, but I think if he plays any hasty creature, we lose just on variants. So, I think what we do is we swing in with the two goblins. Yeah, force him to potentially block and kill one of them. Particularly, he's probably going to triple block the pile driver. And just take two from the Goblin Chieftain, I would guess. Oh, he doesn't. He just takes the damage. Um, okay, well, ship it to our opponent's turn. Again, he just needs to draw into a Lightning Bolt. <laughs> That's all he does. Like, we are playing this super close to the chest. Super close to the chest. Uh, does our opponent have it? He is sitting on his main phase. He's paying cost. It's probably a Lightning Bolt. Probably. Or a Goblin Pile Drive. Or a Goblin Grenade. Either one. Ooh, it is a Bushwhacker. And he's paying it for his kicker cost. Which is a little bit scary for me. Um, it actually means we're dead. <laughs> we're actually dead. Super fun for me. I should have held... Ah, this is what I was scared of. I was like, scared of him playing something like this. Um, and then he plays Reckless Bushwhacker as well. Okay, well... Um, I mean, what, did I, what could I have known, right? What could I have done? I could have like, sat on both these guys and just kept waiting. The big problem is, I mean... The longer we wait, the more likely he is just to draw into an instant win condition, rather than having something like this in hand. So he is going to swing in, and our opponent's going to win. This was a really close match. I didn't win any games, but it was actually a pretty good match in general. 
And I hope you guys enjoyed the video, even though I didn't actually <laughs> win at all. And uh, I know there's nothing I can do, so I'm just going to take the damage as is. Okay, anyways, until next time, I'm Adrian, this is Giant Monster Games, thanks for watching, and don't forget to game like a giant monster.